Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. We're in our series called By Faith and we're learning what faith in God means. And we're going through the book of Hebrews uh, chapter 11, and as we read Hebrews 11, it takes us back to the Old Testament to give us some context. So we'll be doing that today, but we're gonna learn about Abraham and how God uses everyday people like you and I to do his work and will on the earth. Did you know that? God uses you, he wants to use you. And God calls us to things. God calls us to go out and do some things. And that's what we're gonna learn today is about Abraham's life a little bit. We're gonna take three weeks with Abraham and Sarah because their life is uh, mentioned so many times in the New Testament and it teaches us so much about what it means to have faith in God. And my heart is, is that through this series, our faith in God, our trust and confidence in him increases but not just so that we feel good all the time, but that we will go and do what he's called us to do. And to be able to persevere in the world we're living in right now as well. Hebrews 11, eight through 10 will be our scripture. And then we're gonna go to Genesis 12 here momentarily. So let's go to that. If you have your Bibles, you can use that or it'll be on the screen. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. He went without knowing where he was going. Even when he reached the land God had promised him, he lived there by faith. For he was like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. Now the author doesn't go into detail of Abraham and Sarah's life, and he doesn't go into detail about the inheritance or the promise that he was receiving. And that tells us that it means the audience knew about Abraham and Sarah, the audience knew about the promise This scripture we're learning is really just a review of all these people who walked by faith, who believed in God and stepped out in faith. It's really just a quick glance and and view of it. And that's why we have to go to the Old Testament so you can get context of how hard this was for Abraham to step out in faith and do what he did. So let's go to Genesis chapter 12 one through nine, and just, I'm, I'm teaching you that because when you interpret scripture, I'm trying to help you as you study and read through the Bible this year, um, and just so you, this is a good place for a commercial, we are together reading through the Bible as a church, and we provided these uh, reading plans in the lobby for you to help you. Don't be afraid to start now if you haven't started yet, and if you have, you probably have already run into Hebrew, I mean, to uh, Abraham and Sarah's life. Now, just so you know that uh, Abraham's life takes up many chapters in Genesis, uh, but today we're just gonna take a quick glance at the call of Abram in his life. And today my message is called, We Answer the Call by Faith. We answer the call by faith. Now, before you tune me out, you know, that because maybe, you you know, hey, I'm not Abram, I'm not not a pastor. I'm not just talking about the call to full-time ministry, but we're gonna talk about that. I'm talking about the call that God has on every one of our lives, amen? Genesis 12, verse one. The Lord had said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. Uh, Just let me stop there for a moment and just talk to you. You can leave the scripture up. Uh, Some scholars believe that this was partial obedience because Abram was told to leave your relatives and go to a new land, go to a place you're not familiar with, and who did he bring with him? His nephew, Lot, who gave him a lot of problems. <laughs> Lot. Some, it, it makes you learn that, hey, maybe I need to fully obey God. 
so that I don't have to deal with the partial disobedience that I had there, the, the disobedience and how it comes back to kind of haunt you a little bit. Verse two says, I will make you into a great nation. This is, the ble- this is the promise and the blessing upon him. This is the promise and the covenant that God made with Abram. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you'll be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. Now that's a promise. And basically what we see here is multiple things. The first one being that I will make you into a great nation, meaning a people group, descendants. And he has no children at this time and he's 75 years old. So it had not been you know, received yet. I will bless you and make you famous. His name in Hebrew, Abram, means exalted father. So, and everyone knows Father Abraham had many sons. <laughs> sons have father. We're not going to go through the whole thing, though. Let me just tell you right now. <laughs> but he's famous, isn't he? Everyone knows the faith of Abraham. Thank you for helping me. That was good. That was good. It wasn't about him becoming famous and and taking the glory from God. It would be his name that would bring glory to God. All right, so I'll make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. And if someone blesses you, I'm gonna bless them. But if someone comes against you, I'm gonna come against them. Well, that's, that's a promise of God's presence and help. How good is that? Doesn't that feel nice to know? that God is with you and he's gonna protect you and help you and bless you. And he's gonna fight your battles for you. You don't have to do that. Amen. Mm. And then it says this, all the families on earth will be blessed through you. And today we're experiencing that blessing. I'll explain more in a moment. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he had taken into his household at Haran, and he headed for the land of Canaan. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as Shechem. There he set up camp beside the Oak of Morah. At that time, the area was inhabited by Canaanites. Now, It's interesting that God would want to take a land that's already inhabited by Canaanites and Amorites, Hittites, Amalekites. Why did God do that? Can I just give us a little bit of biblical history to help us understand? Because there is right now, currently, an argument over whose land is Israel's. Okay, so let me explain something. First of all, everything belongs to God and he can do whatever he wants. That's his land, people are inhabiting that land. And what we find out later is that their sin was not great enough for God to remove them from the land, Genesis 15, 16. He says, it's not time for their judgment to come because of their wickedness. And for now, your descendants will have to go through four generations. And he's talking about the future enslavement in Egypt. Abraham's descendants would be enslaved by Egypt for nearly 400 years. It would be after that that now the uh, Canaanites would be driven out of their land because of their sin, okay? They'd be driven out by the Israelites and of course, most of all, by God. So that's a little biblical history, so we're getting ahead of your Bible reading plan, but you'll see that now that it wasn't time for that to happen. But I just want you to notice something as well, that the Israelites were later driven out by the Babylonians and taken captive because they sinned. So God treats people fairly. And he wants them to keep their covenant of loving and obeying him. And when we don't, there is punishment, there is consequences for that sin. All right, so that's a little biblical history. But this land is really for him. Now here's the other thing. Uh, Abraham doesn't realize how big his family's gonna be yet, and they need fertile land that's gonna be able to bless them and take care of them. And the land of Canaan is always mentioned as the land flowing with milk and honey. It's an abundant land with tons of resources 
fruitful um, vineyards. And so this was gonna be their promised land, physically, but there's something bigger to this. The promised land is a foreshadowing of our eternity with God. So God made a promise with Abraham that you will have a great nation and a great land, and he even says that, the, that his descendants would reign and rule on the throne of David forever. Okay, now who's that? Jesus. Where was he born? In Bethlehem, a Canaanite town. So God's promise to Abraham is being fulfilled in Jesus Christ, okay? And first it's to save the Jews and then to save the Gentiles, which are us or all people. So now we see that God has a plan. Uh, So first of all, he preserved human life through Noah. Now God has a plan through Abraham to redeem us from sin and to give us everlasting life in heaven and the new heavens and the new earth actually too. This is the inheritance that belongs to all who believe in Jesus Christ. Therefore, fulfilling the scripture that says Abraham's descendants would be a blessing to all nations. It would be through Jesus Christ that all people would inherit everlasting life and be saved from sin and judgment. Praise the Lord. A little biblical history there, okay? Cool, I hope that helps connect dots of now why Jesus had to be born where he was born and what God was up to with Abraham's descendants. Now, Abraham believed and obeyed. The reason why Abraham is commended in Hebrews 11 is because he did leave everything, everything he knew, everything he was familiar with for a land he was not familiar with. And so what we see in scripture is the call is to leave everything you've ever known Leave everything you're comfortable with and go where I say to go. I promise that I will be with you and Abraham does it and that's why he is commended. He's commended for obeying God's command to leave, but you know what else he's commended for? Staying where God said to stay. You know how hard it is, right? To stay after somewhere. You know, you know he could have gone back to his homeland. He could have gone back to where he was. And instead, he chose to stay and live in tents. It's interesting, isn't it? That takes faith too, doesn't it? And then this is what happens in verse seven. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. Did you catch that, verse seven? Then the Lord appeared to Abram. I will give this land to your descendants. We don't know exactly what form he took, We don't know if it was through a vision, a dream, an angel. We don't know if it was a type of Christ, like a a, a being that would look like Christ. We call that uh, theophany, or images of Christ in the Old Testament. Uh, We don't know how he appeared exactly, but we know he showed up, okay, and revealed himself to him in some special way. Why? Because sometimes you need God to show up to reassure you you've made the right choice. And he says, I will give this land to your descendants. So he's reassuring that promise. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated to the Lord who had appeared to him. Isn't that the the best response you can do? As soon as God shows up in your life, you start worshiping him. You know, that's what happens with you at salvation. As soon as your life is saved, now you want to worship him. After that, Abram traveled south and set up camp in the hill country with Bethel to the west and Ai to the east. And then again, he does this. There he built another altar and dedicated to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord. By the way, altar means a place of sacrifice. So they believe that he gave a sacrifice of praise for thanking God for what he was doing. That Abram continued traveling south by stages toward the Negev. Wow, I love that. You know what happened there? God makes himself known more because Abram stepped out and trusted God. I want you to know something. When you step out and trust God, he's gonna show up. He's gonna show up. He's gonna, he's gonna appear. In some way or form, he's gonna show you he is there. And he is there for you. He's not against you. And then what we see here in this scripture is, and I, I have to tell you, I feel like this is the Holy Spirit helping me understand the scripture as I was praying and reading it this week. But what I saw is a growing relationship between God and Abram. 
I thought about my own life and how I've said yes to God and every time I have, he showed up some way, shape or form. And now my trust and love for him has grown because of it. This is how you, this is how you have a relationship with God. The word of God we already learned says, no man shall see, the God, see God unless we have faith, unless we are holy. And God will reward those who earnestly seek him. We learned that in the first week. God shows up. You know what's more, you know what's better than really good land? Is God's presence. Do you know why that's why we started our service today praying? Because I want God's presence in this place. And he is. But I want us to be aware of his presence in this place. Sometimes we gotta just slow down and not just go through the order of things and make sure we are aware that we stand on holy ground. We are in the presence of a holy God, a loving God, who longs to be in relationship with us. And what we see here is Abram, this is the beginning of a beautiful relationship with God. And it takes trust and then worship, amen? How do we apply this to our everyday life? Well, did you know that Abram's story actually correlates with your Christian life? Salvation is leaving everything. To choose to follow Jesus is to leave everything that was familiar to a new life. Do you remember your first week following Jesus? Think about your testimony for a second. Everything changed. Or sometimes it changed slowly over time. For me, instead of following my own desires, instead of following my fleshly desires and my own ideas, I now follow Jesus. And then I follow his word and I follow his Holy Spirit guiding me through the word. That's what it's like to be a Christian. And then what happens is, your old patterns and, and habits change, your, your desires change, and no longer do you have desires for the things you used to be familiar with, now you have new desires to love God and to love other people or to forgive or to help or to worship him, to read his word. It's all brand new, isn't it? Anyone remember when you were a new believer, what it was like? Talk about a new transfer, a new, new transformation in life. Um, this takes faith and confidence in God that you gain more than you lose when you follow him. When I chose to follow Jesus, I believed that I was gonna get more than I, would, than I would lose. And let me tell you something, church, I have learned that, and those of you who are not a believer yet, who are learning and listening today, you will gain more from following Jesus than you will from this world, I promise you that. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. I've heard it often from people's testimonies. Ryan, I quit listening to music I quit listening to. I quit watching stuff I used to watch. I quit hanging out with the people I used to hang out with. You know what I'm talking about, right? My whole life changed. My desires changed. My, my hunger for knowing God increased. Uh, there was a fading desire for sinful things. But let me tell you something, friends. It won't take long for your friends or the people you used to run with to take notice of that. And they probably or maybe won't like it. And some of them do. And they're interested. Let me, let me encourage you today. For those of you who have chosen to follow Jesus and your friends don't like it, let me read some scripture to you. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4, 1 through 5. Remember, we're talking about Abram who believed God was calling him to go. He does. God shows up. Okay? He's about to hit some hard times, though, when you read the scripture. 1 Peter 4, 1 through 5. So then, since Christ suffered physical pain, you must arm yourselves with the same attitude he had and be ready to suffer too. I believe the Christian life does bring you joy and peace and goodness and love. Good days are ahead, I promise you that. But so are suffering days. Do not let people lie to you that everything gets better and perfect when you become a Christian. No, it gets harder. 
The reason why it's, it's, you're able to get through it though is because Christ is with you and strengthens you. And then there's the joy of salvation and there's a joy of knowing the Lord. There's the joy of being with the body of Christ. Now, this is really interesting. He says there, here in the next verse, for if you have suffered physically for Christ, you have finished with sin. In other words, if you're willing to suffer for Christ, you're willing to give up sin. Because you love Jesus so much, you don't even want that sin, you want Christ. And if someone's willing to suffer for Christ, they're probably done with sin. Doesn't mean they're perfect, doesn't mean they're not tempted, doesn't mean they don't slip up and fall, but you don't make it a habit of your life. It's not a pattern of your life anymore. Can I get an amen? Amen. Verse two, you won't spend the rest of your lives, this is an example, chasing your own desires, but you will be anxious to do the will of God. Do you think Abram was anxious to do the will of God? Yes, at first, probably a little scared, right? But by faith, he walked out. He was anxious to do whatever God wanted him to do, so he obeyed. Verse three, you have had enough in the past of the evil things that godless people enjoy, their immorality and lust, their feasting and drunkenness and wild parties, and their terrible worship of idols. And you ready for this? Of course, your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things they do, so they slander you. But remember that they will have to face God who would judge everyone, both the living and the dead. And every time I use this scripture, I remind people that we don't use that against them, that scripture. We pray for their salvation instead. We don't rub that in their face. Hey, God's gonna judge you. You don't do that. You pray for them because God's gonna judge them. And you want God's mercy to be upon them. You want them to be saved. Don't be surprised when your former circle is shocked that you don't want to do all the things that you used to do. Um, I would say you're not losing or missing out on anything. And instead, help them come to Christ. Amen? Amen. The Christian life, like Abram, is you have to remember that this is not your home. And we need to live like this is not our home. Abram never got that fortified city or town to live in. Instead, he stayed as a pilgrim because he knew that he was just passing through. He longed for a city built by God, our scripture says today, not human hands. Can I remind you today, if you've believed in Jesus Christ for salvation, that you need to keep your eyes on Christ through this world? I see in this scripture that Abram kept his eyes heavenward, guarding his heart, and I guard my heart against being seduced by the comfort and pleasures of this world. And 1 Peter 2, 11 through 12 says this, and this is important. Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners, so listen to that, temporary residents and foreigners, to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. Verse 12, be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors, then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. Got good? All right, good. (laughs) It's all good. It's all good, brother. It happens. It happens. Dear friends, ready? I warn you, as temporary residents and foreigners, temporary, this is your temporary home. You ever been on an airplane and you put up pictures and all this stuff, right? Do you do that? You do that, right? You put up all your family pictures up around your your seat, A6, right, yeah? You don't do that. Now, I'm not saying we can't have homes and we can't have belongings. I'm not, not saying that. The scripture says when we live by faith, we look heavenward. We keep our eyes on what we have not fully seen yet. We got to remember that we're just here temporarily. I think I've driven that home enough. But Colossians 3, 1 through 11 is a great scripture 
where he says to fix your eyes on things above, not on earthly things. And what he says next in 1 Corinthians 3 is fix your eyes on Jesus. And it's the same thing that Hebrews does as well. So the Christian life totally connects to Abram walking out by faith and the call to be saved. We're all called by God. God's drawing all people to himself through the cross of Christ. He calls you to be saved, okay? So that's one call that this connects to. There's another one, though, and this is really important. I know that many of you may be established in your life, but not everyone here. We have a lot of young people as well, but maybe you're also in your latter years. Notice I said that. I didn't say old. (laughs) Then Then I go and explain it. There's also the call into ministry. Full-time ministry, part-time ministry. I'm, I'm, I'm really mean this. Uh, right now, Pennsylvania, Delaware churches with the Assemblies of God, we're an Assemblies of God church, okay? We're part of that fellowship or AKA denomination. Uh, we like to call ourselves a fellowship of churches. We have 14 churches that don't have pastors. And pastors around the nation are quitting every week. And I'm not here to, you know, do a pity party for pastors. What I'm trying to say, though, is, is um, they're getting discouraged and they're stepping out. And there's no one coming up to fill, fill up the spots. And so, uh, actually, Pastor Kuhn's here today. The reason why he's, yeah, let's praise God he's here. The reason why he's here right now, or the reason why he's been gone for like six plus months is because in Selbyville, Delaware, we don't have a pastor, so he's been acting as their pastor. Because, by yeah, thank you for the kingdom of God. And just so you know, when God calls you into ministry, it doesn't leave you, does it, pastor? It's still there. This story is often associated with people who are called into ministry because they have to leave everything they've known, and especially missionaries. They leave everything they've known and go live in another land to minister to people they do not know or they're not familiar with. For me, God didn't call me to leave my hometown. Instead, he called me to stay. But what I did give up is any ambitions or desires for my own life, my own uh, dreams, my human dreams, I gave that up, you know, to be a a business owner, to start my own Chick-fil-A franchise. (laughs) With my son being the manager, you know. (laughs) Whatever. I said no to anything that I could write, and I said yes to God's dream for my life. That's what it looks like to follow the call into ministry, is go, God, what is it that you have for me what do you want me to do for you? And when I was 12 years old, God got a hold of me, and through a sermon, I said, here am I, here am I, use me. Now, here's the thing. Since I was 12 years old, every day I've just been saying yes. Yes to God, no to my own ambitions. Yes to God. And those compounded to me being called into ministry or to going into full-time ministry, going off to college, a season of preparation, then being here for, um, wow, 13 years first, 11 years youth ministry, two years as an associate pastor, young adult pastor, and then I've been the lead pastor for three plus years. I couldn't write that story. Never even imagined doing that. We just say yes every day and God begins to write your story. If God has been stirring your heart for full-time ministry or even part-time ministry, listen to that stirring. It could be God calling you. And do not take it lightly, pray on it. And if you need to, talk to one of us pastors because there are ministry opportunities, not just in churches, but there's opportunities to be a missionary, to plant churches, to plant new ministries in our world, amen? Amen. Thirdly, now I did not mean to say this three weeks in a row. I promise you that God has called us to make disciples. 
This is three times now. You could listen back to my messages if you want. When I was in preparation, it was like God was saying, everyone's called to make disciples. I call my people to be disciples who will follow me, obey me, and then go make disciples. Baptizing them. Baptizing those people that you reach, that I reach. And just so you know, last week we had two church members who are not in ministry baptized their people that they have been making disciples with. How cool is that? <laughs> Praise the Lord. All of us are called to minister by loving and sharing our faith in Christ with others. And this can be done in many ways, one-on-one -on -one or in Bible studies, small group context, or being involved in a ministry with youth, with kids, whoever. I just want you to know, though, that God has equipped you to do those things. He wouldn't call you to it if he didn't equip you for it. Amen? Let me prove it to you, though, in 2 Peter 3, or 2 Peter uh, 1, 3 through 8. 2 Peter 1, 3 through 8. Verse 3 says this, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. Well, let me explain more. Okay. Let me read the scripture. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life, for life and godliness in one of your versions. We have received all this by coming to know him, Jesus, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. There's that call. He called you to himself for salvation. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. Does that sound like Abram's life? It does. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. That, that means sanctification, to pull you out of this world and put you in Christ, and now you are holy and useful in his kingdom. Every person who is a believer in Christ is now made holy and useful for his work. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm here to break down some lies from the enemy because he's been trying to say, you aren't clean enough, you're not good enough, you're not worthy enough to serve God, it's not true. Are there seasons of preparation and sanctification and consecration and, and getting rid of things in your life? Yes. And there's also a season of learning how to trust God. Verse five, in view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises because he did all this for you, make every effort to do something for him and this is what he says to do. Supplement your faith, add to your faith a generous provision of moral excellence. So moral living, holy living. In moral excellence, add knowledge to that. In knowledge with self-control. Add self-control with a patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness. In godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. You know what that means? Loving in the family God, that brotherly affection Okay, brother and sister affection for one another and then loving everyone else outside the church. That takes you saying yes to Christ and then adding all those things into your life. And it says this in verse eight, the more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Church, he has given you everything you need to make disciples. And lastly, God's promise includes you. I want to make sure you understand this. That when God promised Abraham that he would be a blessing to many nations, he was thinking about you right now. He saw your face. He saw what your life would become. And he saw that the only thing that would keep you from him is sin. And so he gave Jesus Christ to be born of Abraham's line and to pay for every sin that you've ever committed or will commit, and you receive that by faith in Christ, trust in Jesus, and when you trust in Jesus, God gives you Jesus' righteousness to make you holy and pure in his eyes. He imputes it. He, this is theology 101 of, of salvation. He takes the righteousness of Christ and gives it to you. Wow. 
Wow. You are made righteous through Christ's obedience and, 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 uh, obedience and righteousness. You are made righteous. And we must believe that so that no one's left out. No one is left out. So I wanna give you some takeaways to close. And, and maybe you today, God is calling you to be a part. So, so just so you know, uh, God includes you in this promise. If you don't have Jesus Christ, you're missing out on Christ and the future new heavens and a new earth. But you get to have it now. You get to have eternal life now in part and later it'll be in full. And we live by faith and wait to receive that. So takeaways real quick from Abraham's example from our sermons today. Number one, faith in God is sacrificial. The call of God will always require us to leave something behind, just so you know. Secondly, God will call us out of our comfort zones to accomplish his work. You know why he does that? He wants you to learn how to trust him. Thirdly, to trust and obey. Here's the thing, to trust and obey means you have faith that God has a plan. This is a good thing, right? If you trust and obey God, that tells me, that tells everyone else around, you believe God has a plan. You believe that God's promises are real. Fourthly, it takes just as much faith to stay as it does to go. If you're gonna start following Christ, stay. Remain in him. If you're gonna say yes to the call of ministry or making disciples, stay, no, no matter how long and how hard it is. I've been through some things as a pastor. Pastor Kuhn has been through some things. Even before I was a pastor, I've been through some things and I am gonna stay in Christ and make disciples. It's so fulfilling to do. I love the fact that God invites you and I to be a part of building the eternal kingdom. You get to be a part of that. Say yes. yes. Step out in faith. Amen. Faith in God is a journey that brings you closer to him. We see that in Abraham's life. When he believed and stepped out, he got closer to God. And what happens is God makes himself known in the unknown. And I'll tell you this, going into the unknown and unfamiliar has pushed me to go and get, know, get, uh, get to know God even more. I'm telling you, when you have to step out in faith and, and no, no one else could help explain what you're supposed to do, it drives you to your knees and you start seeking God and you get to know the God in the unknown life that you're living. It's interesting how that works. When I stepped out into the unknown in life, I found a God who loves me and knows me better than anyone else and now I've been getting to know him. It's beautiful. And lastly, we don't have to know all the details if we know God is with us. That's so reassuring. Abraham didn't have to worry about all the details. When God showed up, he knew that God was with him. That's all he needed. It wasn't easy, he wasn't perfect at it. And we'll learn more about that in the coming weeks as we cover his life. This is the prayer I wrote down, and why don't we stand together as I share this with you. There's three people <clears throat> I'm thinking of when I say this prayer. For those who are feeling called by Jesus to believe in him and follow Jesus today, this is what I've been praying for this week. I pray for those struggling to let go of the world so they'll choose to follow Christ. The enemy, the devil, he's been using this world to keep you enslaved and not living free. He's been convincing you that if you choose the world, you're gonna be all right, everything's gonna be good. Everything's gonna pan out in the end. It's not true. Choose Jesus. You'll gain more than you'll lose. Choose Christ today. And guess what? 
when you put your faith in him, he will restore and give you better. He will. He's going to make all things new. He's going to take care of the new friends you may need to have. He's going to take care of the new hobbies and give you new things to do. You know how awesome it is to spend time helping people go to heaven? <laughs> it's awesome. I'd rather do that with my life. Second person, those who are feeling stirred to do ministry full time, maybe even part time, or maybe just start a ministry in your retirement that's going to help bless people and help people. We want to pray for you today. And lastly, for disciple makers, which is all of us, who need the courage to start. These are the things I wrote down. You need the courage to start. You know, you know you're supposed to. You know God has called you, he's equipped you, and you just need the courage to step out in faith and help people know Jesus. I wanna encourage you today to pray with me on these things. Why don't you close your eyes and bow your head, and if that's you today who's saying, I need to trust in Jesus, I hear his call this morning on my heart to come home, he loves me, he forgives me, I'm ready to receive salvation. If that's you, would you raise your hand right now in this place so I know who I'm praying with? Praise the Lord, I see hands going up everywhere. Amen. Would you pray this with me? Lord, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for calling me. Thank you for drawing me today. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you rose again to give me everlasting life. Forgive me today. Make me a new person. Give me this new life that Pastor Ryan's talking about. Give me your Holy Spirit to help me follow you and live for you. And I will give you my life a life of faith, a life of obedience. And thank you for being with me every step of the way. In Jesus' name. For those of you who are feeling stirred into ministry, would you just raise your hand as well right now and receive this prayer. Lord, I pray right now, God, that you would give them the faith to step out and trust you. God, give them the, the hunger to study. Give them the hunger to learn. Lord, give them the hunger, Lord, and the faith to obey you today. Lord, I pray you would crystallize and clarify everything. And God, I pray you would work it out in your timing, Lord, because it takes a season of preparation. Lord, I pray that we begin to say yes now for the sake of the gospel. Today we say yes to this stirring or to at least seek you more and see, is this you, God? What are you doing in my heart? What are you calling me to? And Lord, I pray for all of us in this room, God, that we wouldn't just be people who believed in Jesus so we can get out of hell and get into heaven. I pray, God, that we would commit ourselves to follow you, to be a disciple who learns from you and believes that you're equipping us to go reach the lost and those who are unsaved. God, I pray that you would give us the courage and the faith to step out and be a disciple maker, a person who helps the lost be saved and teaches them about Christ and helps them follow Jesus. We want to make converts and disciples, Lord. We want to multiply in this church so we can see the kingdom full of our friends and family and neighbors, coworkers. God, this is a great work that you've called us to. And if you've called us to it, you'll equip us to it and for it. God, I thank you, Lord, for the reverence in this room right now. I thank you, God, for the hearts that are receiving this prayer, the hearts that are receiving this word. For all of us, Lord God, we thank you for this word today. We can step out in faith. We can answer the call. You'll be with us. We are encouraged today. We give you all the glory and praise for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's give God some praise here today. We thank you, Lord. <laughs>